This is just a short list of many mistakes that can cause you to have to spend a lot of money, unfortunately. Usually when you make an expensive mistake, you never make it again. At least that's true for me. And we're talking about spending a lot of money with mistakes. This is past that. It's more value because of your life. RVing is expensive, guys, and a lot of people quit RVing because of how much money it costs. Right, but in today's video, we're going to talk about RV mistakes that can cost you a lot of money, but they won't have to if you watch this video. First one is not researching enough when buying an RV. Now, a lot of people just go and scoop up whatever, and how do we know this? Because we did it on our first <laughs> RV. But when we talk about not researching enough, we don't just mean just looking online at different RVs. We mean, are you finding the exact floor plan that you need for you? Or it could also mean shopping dealers against each other in order to find the right price. So a perfect example of this, if you want to take this camera, when we first bought our RV, and again, we didn't know anything. We never went RVing before. We just went and we bought it. We bought bunk beds like you see over here because in our minds, people were going to come RV with us and we needed a lot of sleeping space. We had how many visitors? Which they did, but just a handful of times. Right, so we've been RVing now for what, six years, seven years? And we probably have had visitors less than one hand. Well, we bought our RV now really for us. Our next RV, it's definitely going to be for us because we're probably not going to have many visitors, maybe Jason once in a while. So the next one is driving with no help, lessons, or practice. A lot of you reach out to us on our videos that we did about how to drive a motorhome and said, it really helped us, thank you. I'm scared, I'm really scared to drive. And it can be a little intimidating, but you have to make sure that you take the right steps. Before I got into the motorhome, well, we actually did a lesson. <laughs> Do you remember that lesson? Yes. So we took a lesson, it was supposed to be a four hour in-depth lesson. We got there and the guy said, okay, great get in your motor home and let's go. That, that was my lesson. You talk about kicking a kid into the pool without, you know, just teaching them to swim. Luckily, I, it's you know, okay, but we did a lot of practice in parking lots and things like that. So even something like this, that how, how long is this? 18 feet. 18 feet. It is different than driving a car. So you want to make sure that you feel prepared, that you go out, you practice, you do take lessons. And just to make sure that you're comfortable behind the wheel and ready to hit the road. So the next one's going to be backing up and backing in either in sites or in parking spots without help. And now I know a lot of people have experience out there driving trucks. It's a little bit different. And the reason why I say this is that if you're driving a, a big truck with a trailer and you scrape up that trailer, like nobody cares. We've seen the UPS guy, oh the FedEx gosh, guy, they yes. have, they, they're scraping trees, nobody cares. When you're driving your motor home, Every time you scratch something, break something, it's thousands of dollars. If you wanted to repair it, if you want to just leave it that way, it's fine. Also, when you're at campgrounds, there's a lot of things you can't see. So even if you have 360 cameras, a lot of times you can't see above you. There's trees hanging. It's, a lot of times it's hard to see in blind spots below you. Gas stations is a big one, Gas right? stations above is you. huge. Yep. So whenever you have an opportunity, if I've driven alone and I'm reversing, I'm not sure about something, I throw it in park, I get out and I look. Look out the window. Most of the time, I have somebody spotting me. If you're at a campground, I have somebody spotting you. The other thing, if you come with me, you see here are your towables. Now, when you drive a towable, you're towing something, everything is different. If you're a truck driver, it comes second nature. But when you first get in, when you're reversing, everything is the opposite. You're trying to go to the left, you have to steer to the right, vice versa. Something that you have to get used to, like MJ said earlier, take the lessons and always use a spotter. This next one, guys, we're talking about mistakes that can cost you a lot of money, and all of these can. This next one is really, really important, and it has to do with your tires. So not checking your tire pressure and the wear on the tire can cause a lot of issues, and that will cost you a lot of money. Number one, it can cost the tire blowout. Again, we've done plenty of tire videos, and our latest one will link right up above. The next thing is the wear. You want to make sure that these tires are okay to be out on the road. So you're looking for cracks, you're looking for rot, you're thinking you're looking for again tread that it's time to change and you can just tell by that again remember these are keeping you on the road guys so it's one of the first things in order to save money down the road you want to make sure you stay on top of that before we move on to the next one another important thing to keep those tires in check is having a tpms a lot of new rvs have that right from the factory a lot of them don't so you can pick up a tpms we'll put one that we have in the links below so let's move on to the next one and i don't know why I have to say this, but I have to say because this just happened to somebody in our town drive a Dutch star into a Taco Bell <laughs> 
parking lot, 43 foot Dutch star, is knowing your clearances, knowing how big the area is where you're going to be maneuvering. Now, some RVs can be in excess of 60 feet in length, depending on what you have. Some of those fifth wheels are really long. Some motorhomes, well over 50 feet when you add a tow vehicle. Planning out your route, hopefully with a RV specific GPS. We have one, a Ram McNally, Garmin makes another one. And if you don't know what this is, it's made specifically for an RV. So you input your height, your weight, your length, it won't take you down the roads that you can't fit in. But don't put all your faith in a GPS. You still have these two things in front of your face and hopefully the stuff in between your ears. You want to look at road signs. You want to be make, paying attention when you're going down the road. So whenever you're going to see low clearance, for the most part, there will be warning signs before, hey, low clearance this amount of miles ahead. Read them, pay attention to them. You don't want to get stuck in low clearance. Also, if you're planning to stop somewhere overnight or you're going somewhere that you need to eat or something, what we do a lot of times, we just send a scout car out one of us goes and say, okay, this is where we're going to, we're going to enter, this is where we're going to leave. It's just going to save you a lot of time and a lot of headache. And it's going to save you a lot of money because if you take off your roof and an overpass, it's going to be tens of thousands of dollars. The next one is being overweight. And we don't mean the person, we mean the RV and what you're carrying. When you have an RV, everybody always asks, what's the carrying capacity and that kind of thing. You have a certain amount of stuff that you can take on that RV, including everything, yourselves, your clothes, your water. Water is huge. Huge. It is because it's very heavy. So you want to make sure that you take that into account because if you are overweight, you can then be causing damage to your tires and you're putting more stress on the RV overall, on the tires, on the frame. Yeah, they're designed to carry a certain weight. I know there's big discussions online. We have a 5,000 pound towing capacity. We don't tow more than that. But some people it's like, oh yeah, I tow 5,500, it's just a little bit more. Yeah, it's just a little bit more, but your RV is not engineered for that. And if you ever get into a crash, your insurance might not cover you if you're not within the specs. This next one can be very pricey, and we've seen many people make this mistake, and it has to do with what is right above me, which is the awning. Couple of things, leaving your awning out when you're stationary is fine. If there's a storm coming or very high winds, you have to be very careful. This was a couple years ago, I remember, we were at a NASCAR race and this huge storm came in. Our neighbors had their awning out, they did not bring it in. It just ripped off completely. That is really expensive, guys, to have to replace and fix that awning. Another thing about leaving it out, not just stationary, we were at a campground about a month or so ago, and we were walking, and we see a Class C leaving, and they had their awning out as they were driving. They were so grateful. We, we waved them down, flagged them down, told them that they had it out. They didn't even realize. When you're leaving, you want to do that walk around just like you do before you leave home or whatever to make sure you don't make those mistakes. So when you're on your RV, it is your home away from home, but it's made very differently than most homes. So the next one's gonna be about what you put right down the drain and your toilet. And I am super anal about this. We don't put food down our anything. So in our sink, we have a strainer. I clean all the plates off of any kind of food on it before it even goes into the sink. But beside the point, why don't we do that? You're going into holding tanks. Food can accumulate grease you start getting issues with your tanks you start getting a lot of smell now regarding your black tank you want to make sure you use a good product that breaks down the material liquefied is a really good one by match rv reviews but you don't want to be throwing paper towels and all kind of junk down there because it can feminine products feminine, yeah, i'll say it you don't have don't to don't do it yeah <laughs> it, it, you should even do that at home no, because no, it can cause nowhere. a lot of issues never mind in an rv because if you have to get it clean you, you can't call a plumber out to clean or fix whatever plumbing, you have you got to take it to an RV place. And RV places right now by us, they're charging $175 an hour. Put it in the comments below, guys. What are they charging for text by you? But to get out of black tank, a lot of times, it's a huge deal. It costs a lot of money. So the next thing that can cost you a lot of money is not doing a pre trip check and MJ alluded to this a little bit earlier but we're going to take for example this trailer here now we do we don't have a trailer we have a motorhome but I have a checklist going through my head every single time number one the ignition are the levelers up right every time I say is our liquid spring spring at ride height before we pull out what did I always ask you to look out the window oh are the steps up yep. yeah are the yeah. steps up because all just those two alone would cost you a ton of money right is there any clearance are the these are all things like before i even get on i'm checking are all the bay doors locked so a perfect example right here what i would be checking for before we left would be is this jack up right that's a big deal 
are all the connections, as far as the ball, are they all connected? Are the pins in? Are our stabilizers up? Are our steps up? Is there anything that is going to be an issue? Branches, slides, are they in? Awning, is it in? Is everything locked? Just a couple of things that we're going to be checking, a couple of things that you want to check in the comments below. Let us know what your checklist is because any of those issues will cost you a lot of money if they're damaged. And the next one is not checking the weather prior to your trip. What do we mean by this? So a few months ago, this past summer, we were headed somewhere. We had our destination that we knew we had to get to, but a bad storm came in. Now, we didn't know it was coming because it was an area that, you know, we always check at home and then on our destination. It was mid-trip, really bad. We made an executive decision to pull off, find the nearest place, we found a Cracker Barrel, and just stopped early because that could have been bad. You want to carry with you some kind of uh, weather app or weather radio. I know you always get news al weather alerts. Mm -hmm. If you're in an area where there's a tornado alert, it might be a good idea to get out of that area. Right. Probably don't want to drive in snow. Usually these things don't do very well in snow, but just, just using common sense, it can wait. If you're in an area with a hurricane, get out of there. Sometimes it's not worth it. Well, that's the thing. We're talking about, you know, spending a lot of money with mistakes. This is past that. I mean, you could really damage your RV in something like this, but it's more value because of your life. This is just a short list of many mistakes that can cause you to have to spend a lot of money, unfortunately, if you make those mistakes. So in the comments below, let us know what are some RV mistakes that you've made? What are some things that you do to try to prevent those mistakes? Usually when you make an expensive mistake, you never make it again. At least that's true for me. And then if you like videos like this, to the left of us, we put our RV newbies playlist. Put, also put our RV tours playlist and for myself and MJ it's a journey of a lifetime and we'll see, see you, you on, on the, the road, road.